Hi, my name is Mo Moody, and I'm running for Onondaga County Legislature District 15. And this is the Salt City Index, where we interview various influencers throughout the city of Syracuse, Onondaga County, a.k.a. Salt City. Now, this is an unbiased, neutral platform, and the views and the opinions shared by this guest may or may not be shared by me. Hi, everyone. My name is Mo Moody, and I'm your host for the Salt City Index. And before I introduce today's special guest, let me tell you a quick little story about how the first time I met him. I was actually volunteering at a voter drive at the New York State Fair for the NCAAP. And I heard amazing things about today's guest. And when I met him, it was a very casual interaction, something that wouldn't even be that noteworthy, but I already saw the greatness in that individual. So with great honor, I'd like to introduce today's guest, Ali Abdur Rahman. Actually, I changed my name back in 1982. I changed my name legally. My my born name was Alan Edward Sills, and I grew up here. Most of the people, my people I grew up with here in Syracuse know, know me as Alan. But uh, uh, in 1973, I graduated from, uh, from uh, Boggs Academy in Keysville, Georgia. Uh, I stayed uh, the summer with my uncle in Atlanta. And I was ushered to the Nation of Islam, where my cousin, Abdul Rahman was the minister of the Atlanta Temple, and mm -hmm. of course he was a confidant of Muhammad Ali, mm -hmm. a sparring mm -hmm. partner with him. It's amazing. Served as his chief of security, and uh, from then I was introduced to uh, the Nation of Islam. And after the passing of, of course, Elijah Muhammad, I became Sunni uh, Muslim mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and changed my name in 1982. Well, thank you for sharing that because when I was looking into your background, like it was hard because you have two names, and you know that is res you know resonates with me because uh, my father was born Warren Moody, and he's changed his name to Wasi, which also is my middle name. So I'm glad that you uh, shed some light onto that. I, I know that you said you went to Box Academy and that was in high school, but you know you did some great things there. Is there anything that you would like to maybe just talk from that time period? I know it was a while back, but uh, you know. Well. Um I'm sure that uh, no one has ever heard of Boggs Academy. It's a, it was a um, predominantly black boarding school in Keysville, Georgia, and it's in Burke County, where my parents are from. Uh, my parents are from uh, Georgia. Uh, my father, Waynesboro, Georgia. My mother from Gulf, Georgia. And I actually had a number of cousins and um, relatives that either taught at the school or attended the school. And so when my younger brother, uh, Khalifa Darkman, Carla Sills, um, was old enough, um, started the eighth grade. We were both sent down to Georgia to attend Boggs Academy. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was a life-changing experience for me. Um, I w started in the 10th grade, but uh, coming out of public schools, uh, I went to, I attended Roosevelt uh, Junior High School and got into some fights there. and was on the path to really, uh, I guess, some destructive behavior, on the wrong path in terms of really development and growth. And um, so by the time my mother, my parents, you know, they took me out, I was, my brother and I were the only um, persons of color at Our Lady of Lords, which is was in our neighborhood. Mm -hmm. And I went on to Cathedral, and, uh, and from there I went on to Boggs, but... Um, Boggs, I was able to really expand my horizons. I was involved in sports. I mm -hmm. played basketball, football, ran track. I was in a choir. Uh, I was yeah. in a drama club. I heard you're a, a great singer on the low. <laughs> 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 I'm not asking you to sing today, but uh, that's what I heard. Well, yeah, I used to be. I used to be. I used to be a tenor. Yeah, mm -hmm. I sang all through high school and college. Mm -hmm. I was. Uh, I went on to Morehouse College in Atlanta. I was. Uh, a part of the Morehouse College Glee Club, which mm -hmm. I helped to bring here uh, several years ago to perform. But um, yeah, I ended up being the um, uh, public relations manager and secretary in, in my senior year for the uh, Morehouse College Glee Club under the mm -hmm. tutelage of Dr. Wendell P. Whalum, mm. who was the authority on African American uh, spirituals. I wish I would have been there for that time. I could imagine the type of songs that were coming from that uh, from that camp. <laughs> Wow, that's amazing. You know, thanks for sharing that. Um, you've 
very active, you know, very involved in a lot of different organizations and different things while you were in high school and even in college, you know, and going forward. Um, but uh, my understanding is like you had like a chance encounter with someone that was selling high school rings. That's the whole reason why you got the Moore's house in the first place. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of funny. You know, when I was at Boggs Academy, um, the um, the gentleman that was um, fitting us for our high school with graduating rings, Charlie Morgan, um asked me where I was going to school and at that time I was applying in New York University I was also mm -hmm. applying to Washington University and uh, I really hadn't thought about uh, going to an HBCU but he said hey you look like a Morehouse man you should go to Morehouse mm -hmm. and uh, with my uncle being in in Atlanta and a number of relatives in Atlanta as well as surrounding areas in Georgia I applied to Morehouse as well and uh, since uh, some of my classmates we're going to Morehouse. Uh, I actually chose to go there nice. as well. But yeah, he sold me my class ring and was really was the, the secret recruiter. <laughs> <laughs> secret recruiter. <laughs> For it's sure. A, it's amazing those, you know, chance encounters that you have in life that could put you in a completely different trajectory. No doubt. You know, it's it's really amazing that that uh, any number of people can be an influence in your life uh, if you're exposed to them. Mm -hmm. If you're never exposed to them right. and they never say anything to you. Yeah, it, you never get that encounter. So. Yeah, well, I'm glad you had that encounter. And uh, I guess coming out of college, you like formed like a, a media company in the 1980s, right? Is that did I get that correct, or this or close to it? Uh, it's really really uh, interesting um, because my freshman year and my first day at Morehouse College, I um, I was there and my father was there and. Uh, uh, I was uh, going to the cafeteria on campus, and I saw this big black Pontiac, Bonneville, uh, sitting mm. in front of the uh, Maze Hall where the cafeteria was. Mm. And I said, that looks just like the Moore's car. And um, Ike Moore and Fannie Moore, who uh, owned a auto body shop on East Genesee Street, mm. we actually uh, lived in a two-story home with them. Uh, kind of grew up there on South State Street. And sure enough, uh, I went into Mays Hall, and there he was, uh, Ike Moore with his son, Horace Moore, who was the same age as I was. We grew up together, and I had no idea that he was going to Morehouse College as well. Mm. But we ended up being college roommates, and oh, man. Uh, we were roommates for the first, first two years uh, there. Uh, it was really amazing. Uh, Edwin Moses, the uh, Olympic uh, high hurdler lived on our floor. He was in our class. Mm -hmm. uh, Martin Luther King the uh, third was in our, our class at Morehouse, and uh, a number of notable people were also uh, at Morehouse at the same time that we were. Samuel Jackson, wow. uh, Louis Sullivan, mm -hmm. uh, Spike Lee. So it was uh, it was quite 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 a time. There well, definitely at definitely explains a lot of your character. You see like where it comes from, <laughs> which is awesome. It's good to have good quality individuals around you, you know. And it have was that it was amazing. One of the most profound things I think uh, at Morehouse College was that during our freshman orientation, every week we had we had a notable person uh, come uh, out of the community to speak to us about what it is to be a leader, what it is to be an activist, what it is to be a Morehouse man. We heard from Maynard Jackson, uh, Benjamin E. Mays. Mm. We heard from John Lewis. We heard from Andrew Young. We heard from Daddy King. And a number of different people came to campus, Julian Bond, to speak to us as freshmen and to talk about us, to talk to us about our role as, as Morehouse men. Okay. Well, I mean, definitely good journeys, man. Oh, wow. That was amazing, and I thought I had a good time in college. <laughs> but uh, but what I guess propelled you to come back to like from Atlanta in different places? You know, how did you now here in Syracuse? I guess how does that make sense? Well, you know, I mean, I I grew up here in Syracuse, mm -hmm. so it's um, after high school. You know, I really never kind of turned back. I mean, I, after I finished Morehouse, I came back. Uh, to Syracuse and look for a job all summer long. I looked for jobs and filled out applications. I did not get that one interview out of the dozens of uh, different companies really? uh, that I went to. Um, nobody wanted to hire me as a young black graduate uh, from college. And so I went back to Atlanta 
and got a job within a couple of weeks. So um, huh. I was really dismayed and disappointed uh, because my mom worked for the city and um, she was with, uh, she actually helped me. I, I was working ever since I was 13 in different city jobs. Um, but uh, when I graduated from college, nobody wanted to really give me that jump start. So I went back to Atlanta and, wow. and moved on to different cities, Pittsburgh, mm -hmm. Boston, mm -hmm. D.C., uh, where I lived and worked. I used to live in D.C. <laughs> uh, but uh, I ended up buying my parents' home. They uh, went back to Georgia. My father had a farm down there that he had bought with his father, uh, some 150 acres of uh, farmland and raw property. And so he moved back to Georgia and built himself a house, and I bought the house here in Syracuse. Mm. And uh, that's what brought me back to Syracuse. That's what you're back. Wow. I mean, what job were you trying to, like, get like it was the position you were trying to apply for that you just weren't getting any success at well i did sales all through college i was a um, i worked for um, southwestern mm. which was a book publishing company and mm -hmm. every summer i would sell books door to door which gave me a lot of experience in door dealing with people yeah, door to door and, sales is tough and uh, <laughs> actually actually gave me my experience in psychology mm -hmm. which was my which i had my degree in at, in, at morehouse but uh, so I was actually looking for anything. You know, sales is pretty, pretty diverse. You can do a lot of different things with it, uh, psychology as well. And uh, I thought that I could at least get a job with a phone company or mm. utility company here, you know, mm -hmm. as a college graduate. I thought, you know, I mean, everybody was working for GE and all right, you know, these other right. companies and just did not get the return phone call, not one. So I don't know what happened there. Very unfortunate. I mean, look, I, I have a degree in psychology and I'm in sales myself and I understand like the benefits and I like door to door sales is just wow. <laughs> just wow. It really <laughs> teaches you a lot. Teaches you a lot about life. Teaches you a lot very quickly. <laughs> very quick. <laughs> um, well, you know, like on, on a positive note, you know, like uh, so you, you bought the house and back in Syracuse and but you did start like a, you have a media social media. Oh yeah, company, yeah. Right? I, I'm sorry I got off the subject, no, but uh, my college roommate Horace Moore and I uh, started a uh, production company in Atlanta uh, mm -hmm. right after college. Uh, we also work with uh, uh, Rob Alamine. Mm -hmm. uh, some of them, some of them is known as uh, Robert Price. He was at Morehouse as well, and uh, we started a production company. And we did. We were a mobile production unit. Uh, we worked uh, doing videotaping of music videos, working with a number of different bands mm -hmm. in Atlanta. Um, we, you know, we had uh, uh, a studio down there, uh, right downtown, uh, for a while. Uh, we took it uh, actually uh, after Atlanta. I uh, moved to Washington D.C. and uh, continued uh, doing video production there, mm -hmm. and. Um, but I was also doing volunteer work here in Syracuse, working with the uh, Nation of Islam here mm -hmm. in Syracuse. And we had a co-op buying program called AMCOP. And I was a director of, of that particular co-op buying, buying program. And that's uh, where I met my wife, uh, right in Dunbar Center. OK, all and, right. Uh, <laughs> And uh, she wasn't my wife then, but she gave me an ultimatum. You know, I well, I put the ultimatum in. I'm not moving back to circus unless we get married. And so I'm like, well, that was the throw down the gavel. <laughs> and she picked it up. And so that's how I ended up back here. That's how you got back. All right. Well, that's awesome. Well, great story, you know what I mean? But you're doing amazing things here in Syracuse. You know, for example, um, you have your uh, social media, uh, Excel, right, that you're involved in? There's Excel something? Media yep. and Solutions, where I do uh, social media for um, video and photography for social media, live events, um, you know, short video clips and uh, photography for live events. Actually, I do weddings and mm. headshots and all types of photography. But uh, I do that as well as volunteering for the 100 Black Men of Syracuse, where mm. mm -hmm. I've served as um, director at large, uh, vice president, and now working as a program coordinator. All right. Well, for your for your personal business, I mean, of course, I'm running for office myself. I can use some headshots. We can talk later. <laughs> <laughs> I think I got to work on mine, the what I currently have. But uh, if people like back home, the viewers and listeners, um, 
how can they get a hold of you for like your social media for your services? Um, check my LinkedIn account uh, over there. LinkedIn, uh, Ali2XL at uh, gmail.com is my email address. Of course, uh, I don't have a Facebook page, but definitely I do uh, add content to a number of different uh, people's Facebook pages. Mm -hmm. uh, I do have a uh, website where I post my photos, Excel, um, video photo one dot shoot proof dot com where I house a number of different pictures. You can go there and see pictures from Central New York uh, marketing executives. You can see Eastwood Rotary. You can see mm. NAACP. You can see Juneteenth. A number of different events I've covered, and uh, a lot of those are free downloads. A lot of it's free downloads, too. You heard that? <laughs> That's amazing. I'm glad that you're doing that. Uh, from being an entrepreneur here in Syracuse, and we'll talk about other all the other great things that you got working uh, you know, that you're dealing with, but for being an entrepreneur, what do you see can help Syracuse? Like you've been here, you've been other places, you know, Boston and, you know, Pittsburgh and DC, and you have a very unique, you know, perspective, but from like a business point of view, like what do you think can be done here for like the you for to Syracuse as a whole? Well, I think it's a uh, pretty exciting times here in Syracuse right now. Um, you know, I've seen a total change of climate in terms of attitudes of different people. You know, when I was coming out of college, it was pretty much, you know, you had to know someone in order to, you know, get a decent paying job. And and even now that to a certain degree, that, that still is the same. But, but I, a lot of doors have opened, at least for myself, uh, that I've never seen open before. Um, I, this year, I was um, privileged to receive a, um, a sales and marketing award from the Central New York uh, Sales and Marketing Executives. Oh, wow. Um, Congratulations. Th thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. Uh, I was also honored by a CUSE Connection as a community service um, uh, advocate. Uh, CUSE Connection, if you don't know, is a 501c3. They are a grassroots south side um, uh, group. That mm -hmm. formed a 501c that gives scholarships to uh, our inner city youth, our city youth. Um, they do a, a a fundraiser every year. Well, every other year they trade off with Atlanta in terms of uh, doing a homecoming. Okay. Where they do a three day weekend thing, uh, you know, a Friday night meet and greet, Saturday in the park, and then a dinner, awards dinner on Sunday that they do every other year. And this year they did that. Uh, uh, here at the Sheraton, so it was very successful, and I was uh, privileged to be honored with, along with Mike Atkins and several other uh, community uh, members. I wasn't there; I missed the memo. Man, that <laughs> sounded like a great fun night. Man, that to be you know honored. That's that, you know that's amazing. I mean, it's like I guess in essence, sometimes like when you help the community and you go out, you're not doing it for a pat on the back, and then when you kind of get it, you're like, oh yeah, that is kind of nice. Yeah, yeah, it feels it feels good. It feels yeah. good to be recognized by by the people that you know and the people that you love. Mm -hmm. um, for them to you know give you your flowers while you're still alive is is really yes, really really big kudos. Uh, to Absolutely, everybody out there that does that. That's amazing. Well, I mean, uh, I know that you're a part of like hundred black men, but like the, one of the reasons why I also wanted to get you onto the show was just because the fact that you're usually the person behind the camera. Like you're doing all the recording and the filming and you're usually at all these events, but yet you're not seen as much because you're recording. That's why I wanted to get you here today um, because you're doing amazing things with like a hundred black men. So like one of the things that I definitely resonate with myself is like your cadet program, that initiative. Um, but by all means, open platform. Like, what do you like to say about 100 Black Men? Let people know what it is if you don't know. Well, you know, the 100 Black Men, our chapter uh, was established by Jerome Walker and Walter Island, and uh, they uh, helped to uh, found the chapter here in Syracuse. And 100 Black Men of Syracuse have been in existence for about 15 years now. Uh, a lot of it, a lot of notoriety, I guess, has been. Uh, about the gala that they put on every year, mm -hmm. uh, which I mean, till COVID, uh, but uh, right. which was has been grown in popularity. Where we've gotten, I think, the last time that we had it at the On Center was like five or six hundred people. Um, wow! And so, but we have a number of different programs that we that we have in the school. Jerome uh, kind of runs the uh, Brilliant Young Minds Book Club out of Van Dyne School, where where young kids are, are encouraged to read and they're given a, uh, 
a big party at mm -hmm. the end of a you know finishing a book. Uh, we also have our youth empowerment program uh, that we run on Saturdays. Dorothy Clark, the husband of Tony Clark, one of our members who uh, retired uh, a service member, mm. uh, runs that particular program right now on Saturdays. It runs by Zoom for three weekends, and then on the fourth weekend, they uh, take a field trip, and they visit places like the Museum of Science and Technology, and nice. go on a trip to Rochester Institute of Technology, you know, for the RIT, Imagine mm -hmm. IRT. Um, we also have, we just finished last weekend, our uh, Winston Gaskin uh, Walk for Wellness, Winston Gaskin was the first black pharmacist in the Syracuse area. And the walk was named after him. And wow. um, it's been gaining in popularity. And, and last year was our biggest year uh, where we had over 20 different organizations to join in with us. Mm -hmm. And um, just a couple of weeks ago, we finished our scholarship golf tournament, which we partnered with uh, Pinkney Hugo. Mm -hmm. Uh, Doug Pinckney over there at Pinckney Hugo has assisted us, and uh, we had a scholarship golf tournament, which was sold out uh, in Skinny Atlas, New York. So I was there. If you missed it, you don't want to miss it next year, <laughs> right? Whenever they're doing it again, you want to be there. It was an epic event. Yeah, it was. It was a great time. We had a ten thousand um, dollar hole in one um, tournament, but uh, Did anyone win nobody, that? nobody won it. Nobody won it. All right, all right. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we did have a winner at the putting contest. So that, so mm -hmm. that was a putting contest. That we had some winners there. So, but uh, it was uh, we, we raised over fifty thousand dollars in terms of um, uh, the scholarship fund, and we hope to do more uh, in terms of uh, recognizing our youth in the city. Mm -hmm. So we have a number of different programs. We'll be starting up programs at Fowler High School as well uh, this year, uh, working with the Good Life Foundation and mm -hmm. some of the members mm -hmm. there. So we partner with a number of different organizations in the city, uh, the United Council of Negro Women, the, our black sororities and fraternities, Kappas, Alphas, Omegas, uh, also uh, the Lynx, mm. uh, Women of Pearls, uh, and our health uh, organizations. So we really, Vera House, uh, our number of our men are trained uh, by the professionals over at Vera House. Oh, really? And we uh, nice. you know, mentor the youth in terms of domestic violence. Mm. And, mm -hmm. and things of that nature so mm -hmm. well last i spoke uh you know relating like 100 black men like your big focus or where you were looking for help would be like in recruitment like in getting people to come in to be mentors if that's my understanding or just donating just four hours right like or can you just talk about like that initiative or what you're looking to get because people are listening now maybe we can inspire some some young gentlemen to uh step up well you know actually 100 black men of syracuse is a totally volunteer organization right now mm -hmm. uh, so uh but our members are varied we we have people that um you know work uh, at uh, different all to different types of job levels uh, so actually, you know, as we sp expand out into the community, and, and as everybody knows, uh, our our inner city community is, has been tagged as being one of the poorest uh, yeah. nation uh, uh, communities per capita in the nation, mm -hmm. and uh, it has an effect. It has a generational effect, and it definitely has effect in terms of our representation, in terms of uh, our workforce. And so we want to change that dynamic. We want to really prepare our youth either to uh, go on to college, uh, go mm -hmm. into a service industry, uh, uh, which you mentioned, junior cadet, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. which was introducing um, different service uh, uh, industries to our youth, uh, working with Martin Luther King School, uh, where they were introduced to the police department, the fire department, EMT work, uh, and they actually get to see firsthand what's that all about, and they actually get to visit those particular facilities to see the people at work. So we want to prepare our youth in order to go into those service industries, into college, or even into the military. Mm -hmm. And in order to provide a career path for them, uh, to get them started so that we can raise this level of poverty in our community and, and really get uh, yeah. out of that vicious cycle of, of degeneration you know that's one of the biggest challenges i've seen that's why it motivated me to actually run i mean we have degrees you know degrees in psychology and understanding um the effects of having a fractured home you know and by having an absentee male like that is hard 
on families. Yeah, I was very privileged to um, have both of my parents uh, at home, and uh, they were very involved in the church at Bethany Baptist Church. We grew up at Bethany, and um, I remember because you know, we lived in the Fifteenth Ward. Mm -hmm. And I remember as a child, uh, you know, we lived on Cedar Street and um, walking uh, from uh, where Bethany used to be in that area uh, onto the what was then the new church on uh, Irving Avenue. Mm. And we actually walked from the old church to the new church uh, as a child. That, that kind of stuck out in my mind for some reason. But uh, yeah, we were moved out of the 15th Ward. We moved over to Oakwood Avenue and then went to Say Street and uh, then on to West Lafayette behind Roosevelt. Uh, then I moved out. <laughs> 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 well, uh, you know, the, uh, you know, the service industries, like there's definitely a recruitment gap. A lot of people from like the underrepresented parts of Syracuse are not taking these jobs. Um, I myself am a former New York City police officer, so like I know the benefits of the retirement and the health insurance and all this stuff that comes with it. Besides the wealth of like skills of personal development and training that you get from either fire or from like law enforcement or EMT or nine one one, etc. So the fact that you're helping people get into that industry is awesome because we're facing a lot of challenges, right? And if we have more representation in these groups, then this will really be the root solution to solve a lot of our issues that are going on so i'm a big supporter of like the junior cadet <clears throat> program um but uh when it comes to being like uh uh besides that you're also having helping kids get into uh stem right like is that out of focus as well uh or yes actually we're um 100 black men of syracuse is applying for a charter school uh application uh, we've got an application in to start a charter school and we want to base it off of the principles of 100 black men uh, we're modeling off of uh, Eagle Academy in New York City, who has a, who have schools in each each of the boroughs. Uh, they were founded on the principles of a uh, hundred black men mm. out of Syracuse. And of course, the the original chapter um, of a hundred black men is the New York City chapter, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. where uh, you have some of the notable uh, uh, leaders there uh, who started the chapter and it spread it throughout. The nation there's over a hundred different chapters uh, throughout the nation and internationally uh, uh, so um, we hope to really institute a foundation where that's that's going to be long-lived in terms of changing the dynamic of our communities and preparing those students and not only just preparing them to go into jobs and careers but also you know a lot of our families are kind of split up now we have yeah. a lot of single home mm -hmm. uh, single parent homes yeah. and uh, a lot of times our youth need mentoring in terms of role models in terms of family yes. some of the things that we may have grown up with uh, in terms of having good manners at home uh, being respectful for elders mm -hmm. and listening to your parents and I'm just shocked by 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 kids can just Tell their parent, no, I'm not going to do that. Or tell a teacher, no, I'm not going to do that. Uh, I don't want to. And, and uh, you know, we, we had a different type of respect when we were growing up. And I think that's yeah. something that's learned basically in the home, but you don't have to get it there. You can get it in other places. Correct. Um, and so we'd like to establish good character in our youth as well. And so that's what mentoring is all about. So, you know, yes, we're, we're, we're recruiting for new members, but we need people in all walks of life. Mm -hmm. We need people with all types of different skill sets. Uh, our youth now are being introduced to now, they've got their telephone, it's like a mini computer. You know, it's what we used to have as desktop computers, computers. before right. people carry around on their wrist and in mm -hmm. their pockets. Mm -hmm. uh, so this information age is really devastating in terms of the effects that it's having, the mental effects that it's having on our youth. And so we need guidance from 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 the, our elders in mm -hmm. terms of Absolutely. how to deal with some of these things. And of course, our elders need some guidance as well. <laughs> so <laughs> everybody could take a little bit of mentoring. You know, you're not too old to be mentored and you're not too young to be mentored either. Correct. And what type of time commitment would someone look, or what are you looking? What's the minimum, I guess, to get involved? Well, there's no minimum. Uh, we take uh, uh, members, and members, we know that that each each person has their own 
skill set to contribute, whether that be boots on the ground or whether that might be uh, administration mm-hmm. or something like I do in terms of program coordination, or it might just be being able to talk to youth, uh, being able to talk to a young person and relate to them. Uh, not everybody can relate to kids. And mm-hmm. Not everybody can mm-hmm. relate to adults. And so, you know, we definitely need people of, of all shades, uh, all colors, all all nationalities mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. all mm-hmm. skill sets in order to be able to really bring our community together. Uh, I think there's some truth to being, you know, it takes a village uh, in order to raise a child. I think there's a lot of truth to that. Definitely. Uh, I mean, the, the, just being involved, I guess, is like, how would I get involved? I guess if I was a viewer listening to the show and I'm like, all right, great, I want to be a member uh, or want to get involved, like, where do I, how do I get in touch? Of course, uh, you know, we have our website, 100blackmensyr.org. You can find us on the web. Uh, We also have our general membership meetings at the Syracuse Innovation Center. uh, That's right uh, next to uh, Duncan Bright. Mm -hmm, Uh, It's mm -hmm. open to the public, actually. Uh, You can come to our general memberships meeting. It's the first Tuesday of every month at 5.30 p.m. We also hold those general membership meetings on Zoom as well as in person. So, um, Mm. you know, with an invite, you can get the Zoom link. But definitely, if if you uh, are interested, go to our website, uh, 100blackmensyr.org. Uh, visit our website. It gives us all the contact information you need in order mm-hmm. to call us or, or email us or even visit our website to see our program, see what we're doing, see who our leadership is. And um, certainly everybody is welcome in order to visit with us. We often have uh, uh, different organizations uh, representing and coming and presenting to us in order to, for us to partner with. Mm-hmm. We're always looking for partners uh, to reach out to the community and um, uh, currently, I'm uh, holding a networking recruitment at the uh, Collegian on October the 18th okay. at 6 p.m. And if you're interested, please, uh, you know, give us a shout out. Uh, give us a call. Uh, shoot us an email. You can contact me directly if you like to at 100 Ali Rahman. That's 100 A-L-I-R-A-H-M-A-N at gmail.com. Uh, in order to uh, come, there's just no charge to for this networking event, Amazing. and we'll be holding these uh, networking recruiting events quarterly. Uh, so this first one is the second one is coming up on October the 18th at the Collegian Hotel. That's amazing. Um, that's fantastic. Thank you for sharing that. I mean, now I've asked you a lot of questions just in the tail end. Open platform. You can talk about whatever you want. Is there anything that you have not talked about or <laughs> something that you want to bring up at the last moment? You know. Well, I could give you the litany of different accomplishments <laughs> that I've made. <laughs> but, uh, you know, one of the things I, I did want to mention that, 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 that some people may not know about me, um, which uh, certainly I, I haven't uh, really explored, but it's only something from high school, is that uh, I was actually named uh, the best actor in the state of Georgia in 1973 when I graduated from high school, I was able to covet that award out of a statewide competition in Athens, Georgia. And uh, one of the other notable things that I really hold cherished is that I'm one of the founding members of the Morehouse College Glee Club, Mm -hmm. which I helped to establish in 1973, uh, my first year at Morehouse College. Still going strong, no? Right? Still going strong, still going strong. So. I brought Morehouse College up here uh, several years ago, and I hope to bring them back again in order to perform at uh, Bethany Baptist Church. Uh, it's really amazing to see these young men come out and sing. I sang with them for four years uh, and ended up being public relations and secretary uh, manager uh, with them. Uh, the type of knowledge that you get and experience that you get from singing and traveling with a group. I mean, we, we did three week tours in college where we uh, went from New York City to uh, the Dallas, Texas, uh, to wow. Miami, Florida, uh, to perform at different organizations. We sang at the Ebenezer Baptist Church, an ecumenical choir. Uh, that's uh, that's uh, Martin Luther King uh, Seniors Church. Uh, and just being involved and being able to meet some of those people 
uh, I think also that uh, some of the things happening in Syracuse with uh, Eli Smith and Emmanuel Henderson, mm. what they're doing, uh, Al Java, mm -hmm. Abdul Qadir uh, over there with the uh, Dream Summit, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. some incredible work. Uh, we have Charlene Tarver with the Women's uh, Economic uh, Summit. Uh, we have uh, Bishop Dewberry with the MWBE, um, COHI, uh, his, his summit that's going on. We have some tremendous opportunities out there right now uh, for, for people to gain knowledge, to be introduced to notable, uh, uh, accomplished uh, experts in the nation that come to Syracuse. I mean, so many people don't even get a chance to meet these people. They only see them on TV mm -hmm. or hear about them on the radio. But some of these people are actually showing up. Uh, Eric Dyson was just here uh, wow. with, with the Economics uh, uh, Summit. Uh, it's tremendous, tremendous mind, you know, such a wealth of, of power and information. So you know, I encourage people to get out into the city. We've got a lot of great things uh, going on in the city. Uh, uh, we have more black businesses now, uh, women-owned businesses in the mm -hmm. city now than mm -hmm. I've ever seen before and, and never even thought that we had, you know, you can probably count 50 different minority-owned businesses that are, that, are, that are going on in the city. So we need to really support these businesses. Mm -hmm. We need to support mm -hmm. our youth. And uh, the Good Life Foundation, working with the uh, Keenan Center here, has produced a uh, $10,000 giveaway for, for uh, youth mm -hmm. entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. this, mm -hmm. this is a tremendous effort that, that's going on to the city to spur uh, entrepreneurship as well as, as to change the dynamic that we're seeing in our city. So we've got a lot of good things, but we need people to uh, to jump on board, jump on that train, and we need people to encourage it. And if you you know, if you can, uh, donate and support it in mm -hmm. one way or the other. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. uh, we as 100 Black Men of Syracuse are, are looking to be a catalyst in terms of uh, uh, providing uh, that vehicle in order to help uh, contact, connect with uh, some of these organizations and also provide a platform in order to service the city. Well, um, I'm definitely a supporter. And in the sense of if I am elected as county legislator, I would definitely look to see if there's some way we could move the budget around <laughs> to get you guys some help. Well, we, we do have friends in the city. Pam Hunter has, mm -hmm. has been, a, a, and, and our city councilors have really been friends of ours mm -hmm. and have supported us along the way. Uh, you know, Deputy Mayor Sharon Owens and, and even Ben Walsh uh, certainly have, have been uh, big supporters of ours, and we do appreciate it and and really support our organizations and the businesses that donate and sponsor mm -hmm. our events. We, we appreciate it, and we thank you very much. All right. Uh, and last question, which I usually ask most of my guests, is like, if you were a politician, I know you're not, or maybe you will be, but if you were a politician right now mm -hmm. and you could change anything in Syracuse, what would that be? And uh, why, I guess and why? Well, I never thought about that. Um, um, I guess it would have to be uh, uh, related to the coming down of the I-81 and really uh, making affordable housing um, and a strategic element in the city. You know, uh, once again, I was a product of the 15th Ward. It was displaced by I-81. I and I think that uh, we really need affordable housing in the city. Mm -hmm. We're going to have a serious problem uh, with, with, with housing, especially with uh, my crime coming in. Um, there's going to be a great need for that, but we don't need to neglect those people that are underserved. And we really need to make sure that they have a place to go, a place to live, and a decent uh, um, pathway in terms of uh, providing for their families absolutely absolutely well i'm very honored that you were here today as a special guest on the salt city index no, thank you mo um definitely look forward to interacting with you and 100 black men and every all the other groups that you mentioned you know what i mean in the yeah, future we expect to see you october the 18th no doubt no yeah doubt. <laughs> uh i think i can uh probably give up about four eight hours a month i don't think that's such a big ask you know i don't think that's a big ask at all not at all not, not at, at all, all. Um, but yeah, definitely grateful. Thank you for you know tuning in. Of course, the Salt City Index is a neutral platform, uh, unbiased, just allows you know influencers throughout the city of Syracuse and Onondaga County to just 
speak their mind. So thank you for being on the show today. Thank you. Thank you. All the best. Thank you.